Hey guys, my name is Pansy and welcome to my BDO gear progression guide. In this video I'm going to show you how to choose which gear to upgrade next, seasonal gear progression during and after the season ends, examples of gear progression on normal servers, and much more. And always before we begin, please do like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. I stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.30pm Eastern. If you'd like to support me, the best way to do so is to share my video with your friends and on Discord. So throughout this guide, I'll be referring to the fundamental principle of dividing the total cost of the item by the amount of AP you gain. This will determine which item will give us the most bang for our buck. It'll be the most efficient route of utilizing your silver. So, for example, let's take a look at a Tet Layton versus a Tet Tungrad. Let's say the Laytons would give me 5 AP and the Tungrads would give me 2 AP. So, the Tet Laytons at the moment on North America is 10.5 billion. If I divide it by 5, I'm spending 2.1 billion per AP point. Now, for the Tet Tungrad, that would be a 2 AP increase for me. So, if I divide the cost of 6.7 billion for the earring by the 2 AP, that means each AP point would cost 3.55 billion per AP. So essentially the amount of money I'm spending for each AP point is much less for the Tet Layton, so that's what I would want to go for. Now there is one exception to this rule. Whenever you're determining what to get next, you can skip this rule if an item is at its lowest point. That means, let's say the maximum price of a Tet Tungrad is 7.5 billion and the minimum point is 6.2 billion. That means you would want to go for that Tet Tungrad instead of the Latens if it's at its minimum price. If the Tet Latens is also at the minimum price, obviously you'd go for the Tet Latens. But you want to pick up items when they're at the minimum price when you're buying your gear and not enhancing. This could be the difference of anywhere from 500 mil to billions. So it's definitely something you want to keep an eye out for and plan ahead of time when you're determining which item to get next by looking at the market trends. Now before we get started, another mechanism you need to keep in mind in BDO are AP and DP brackets. On the screen I've displayed the bracket tables. As you start reaching these brackets, you start getting a lot more hidden AP and bonus DR reduction. These brackets will essentially set your next goals going forward. Now, the main reason I want to point this out is because you're going to have to decide between Kudum and Nuver at some point. Now, the Kudum is generally the PvE offhand and the Nuver is dubbed the PvP offhand, but you can use them interchangeably under certain conditions. In terms of PvE, you basically want to pick up a Kudum all the way until you can hit 261 with the Nuver and then use the Nuver until you can hit 261 with the Kudum, after which the Kudum will be the undeniable favorite. As for PvP, generally the Nuver does more damage, but you'll have to decide for yourself where you want to give up DP in order to have more damage. It is viable to stick with a Kudum, but it comes down to your individual class and personal preference. Now let's take a look at seasonal gear progression. We're going to start off with what you should upgrade first, when playing the seasonal as well as what you should do after the season ends. Starting off into seasonal server as a beginner player can be quite daunting in the beginning because you have to learn a lot of things about the game in order to progress. So initially I would definitely recommend any new player to aim to get all their gear to pry or try anywhere in between before you move forward with the pen enhancements. Now as you probably see on the screen, one of the rings and one of the earrings are already at pen. That's because at level 60 and 61, you get a free pen ring and earring. As for starting your journey towards pen, I would recommend first enhancing your awakening weapon to pen and your offhand weapon. Ideally, even if you're playing succession, you'd probably start off as awakening as succession requires a lot more skill points to be viable, whereas awakening can be efficiently used much earlier. Now let's say you're done with your weapons. You can enhance your main hand to pen as well, but it's not a high priority if you're playing Awakening. I would next go towards the gloves and enhance the accessories simultaneously. So the order of the gears I would do is gloves, armor, and then no particular order for shoes and helmet. As for the accessories, I'll definitely prioritize a necklace and then belt. Finally, earring, and lastly the ring. 
The reason being, you get a free Kaposha ring at level 61, and level 61 is very easy to attain. As for the earring, you can get a Kaposha earring at level 62, but that does take a bit of grinding from 61. You don't really have to even force yourself to enhance that second ring because at the end of the seasonal server, you'll get a Pen Kaposha ring. The Pen Kaposha ring is the equivalent of a Tet Crescent, which is worth a lot more than the equivalent of a Pen Kaposha earring, that being the Tet Narc. So definitely pick the ring guys, it's more bang for your buck. Now, let's assume that you're done with enhancing on your seasonal character, everything is full pen to Vala. What do you do next? Well, the first thing I would recommend doing is go through your adventure logs. They're definitely worth doing, and the Bartali log will give you 4 AP, the Deeves log will give you 1 AP, and the Doran's log will give you another 1 AP. However, on the screenshot above, I'm not going to be including the Doran's log as that's quite expensive to do, and that would be something you'd save till the very end. Now that you've graduated from the seasonal server, the first thing you'd probably do is equip your Pen Kaposha ring. That's a 3 AP upgrade from your Pen Tavala ring. Now it's time for you to calculate how much each AP gained costs and decide your next upgrade. For example, here we're taking the Tet Bassi, but also the Tet Crescent is quite cheap and is also a 3 AP upgrade. So on the screen you'll see the other accessories which are relatively cheap and you can use this method to determine which one to buy. The only reason I didn't put up a Tet Ogre is because that requires quite a bit of money and we'll touch on that next. If you're looking to spend big money, I would definitely do your primary weapon first. If you're a Succession player, Tet Blackstar or Penzarka. If you're an Awakening player, you're Pen Dandy. Now, as I said, this isn't a specific order on which you have to go by. Stick to the original rule and the exception I mentioned, and pretty much just try to prioritize what's more important. Now, during the process of upgrading your AP gears, guys, I definitely recommend you pick up some armors as well. The reason being is because the helmet is an equivalent of a Giat's helmet. The shoes are equivalents of Tet Muskins, which have very low DR. Whenever you're going the evasion build, you want to go all in with Liebers and Muskins, and ideally you want to choose evasion once you're able to get pen of both of those. And on top of that, for an evasion build to be effective, you need the right crystals as well. So throughout this guide, I'll be using Begs and Oregons as an example, but if you really want, you can go Liebers and Muskins as well. Just keep these facts in mind. So the Pen Heave Helmet or Pen Fortuna Helmet, both of them have the same stats, one's cheaper than the other because it's less popular. But anyway, these are definitely good to pick up because once you Kafra them to 9, that's additional 5 DP. And the amount of Kafra stones required are around 1100 something and is much cheaper than Kafraing boss armor. So that about concludes it for the seasonal section guys because at this point you're probably more experienced than me and I really can't recommend what to go next. It's really personal and preferential because let's say you really want to go dead god armor so that means you're going to need to get your dim tree to pen and then Kafra it to level 10. You can go begs gloves for more accuracy as accuracy will increase your damage output. Same thing with pen kudum so you know pick and choose for yourself, uh, keep the rule in mind and yeah, let's move on to the next section. Alright, now let's move on to gear progression on the normal servers. So on the screen you see three separate gear sets. Now we're playing BDO at an odd time where gear's pretty much handed out for free. So let's go one by one here. If the Oasis event didn't exist, what would be our priority? Well, that would be doing all the main story questline and getting all the gear from the Medea questline, the weapons, as well as getting the accessories from the remaining questlines, which is Valencia, Kama Sylvia, and Dragon. Now, on the normal server, you can literally start doing the main story questline from the beginning and be able to complete it for its entirety. The leftmost screenshot is just an example of things you can purchase in case you do want to spend some silver while doing the main story quest line and get some easy upgrades. The plus 15 Leverter represents the free one we got um, as a new player. The plus 10 Awakening Weapon is the free Awakening Weapon you get for doing the Awakening Quest. And the offhand is just any AP offhand, which differs for every class in terms of the name, but every class has a green AP offhand you can use. Bears accessories are really cheap and pretty decent AP for what they are. 
So if there's no Oasis event, you definitely want to do all the main story quest line to get all the gear you can get, which is represented in the middle screenshot. But if the Oasis event is there, then you can get the free gear from that, like the right screenshot, and also get the accessories from the main story quest line. This is a really good starting point, guys, and back in the old days when the game was new, we didn't have this kind of quest gear. These were all added as a catch-up mechanism, so make sure you take advantage of it. All right, let's assume you finished all the main story quest line and you don't have the Oasis gear. This is what you're going to do next. The first things you want to focus on are definitely your awakening weapon if you're planning to play awakening or your main hand weapon if you plan to play succession. Only go succession if you have enough skill points to support it. So first go for the tri dandelion weapon and a tri -cudum. Having these will ensure you'll be able to grind everywhere before the desert in Valencia, and you'll be able to progress a lot easier. So right after that, I'd recommend getting Triceraps. They're quite cheap. Now, this isn't a mandatory route to go, guys. If you guys saw my progression series for my Mystic, I went straight from the quest gear all the way to Tet gear. So I completely skipped this step, but... That's because I brute forced the game. I did a bunch of scrolls for two months until I made enough money to buy all my Tet gear, which isn't recommended. So there's no shame in going. Uh, try gears first. Absolutely go for it if uh, you want to enjoy the game, unlike me. So after the main hand weapon and the Kudum, get the necklace, and then you can work on the gear. So in terms of the gear, I would go Beg's Glove first. And then I would focus on the main hand just to have the accuracy from the Zarka. Now accuracy is really important, which is why we're prioritizing those two. And just note guys, you can definitely go Oregon's here. Muskin's not recommended at this early stage. They're not as good because your evasion doesn't scale as well. So definitely pick Muskin's if that's a route you want to go. But I just put this here because the suppressed boss gear was a thing and I'm sure some people still have those uh, equipped, so just wanted to have some semblance here. Next, make it a priority to get to level 61. It's very easy to do, guys. Questing will get you there. Get the Chengas Tomb and just quest your way to 61. Easy peasy. You get a Kaposha Ring, which will substitute a Tri Crescent. So that's a pretty big upgrade. That's almost 4 AP from this setup, so be sure to do that. All right, now it's time to start working our way towards Soft Cap. First you want to go Dandelion, then Kudum, then Zarka. However, if you are playing Succession, you can go uh, Zarka, Kudum, and then Dandelion. Now once you complete the Tet weapons, I would recommend you start off with your gloves, then your shoes, then armor and helmet. You can go Pen Heaves or Pen Fortuna as I would recommend, but for the sake of showing what soft cap is, I'm going to leave this here. Now when going for the accessories, you can do these before the Tet boss gear for sure. Uh, you can do alternating or just mix it up. That's completely up to you. When deciding which accessory to go first, just follow the rule we talked about in the beginning. Divide the total cost by the amount of AP gained and find out what's the most efficient route forward. By the time you're soft cap, you definitely want to have Bartali and Deeves Law completed. That's another 5 AP. There is a Doran Log as well, but that does cost a bit of money to do. So try to get it done when you can. Now after you reach soft cap, you generally want to chase the next AP bracket and purchase whichever gear gives you the most amount of AP for the least amount of silver. For this example, I'm taking the Tet Bassi. However, if the Tet Crescent is cheaper, you can definitely go that route. But I wanted to show you guys this because if I bought the Tet Bassi here, that gives you enough AP that if you switch to a Nuver, you'll be 261 Nuver. And 261 Nuver isn't that bad. It does quite a bit of damage. And I started grinding Kratuga at 239 AP and Star's End at 244. So while I was clearing slower, I was still making good money there. So you can definitely go there if... So you can definitely go to higher end spots if your class permits it. And switching to a Nuver and hitting the 261 bracket was a big help for me. The 269 bracket is the last of the major power spikes you'll feel in terms of AP brackets. Going forward, the AP brackets still give you more AP, but you won't see that large of a difference. Try to hit this however you can. In this example, I showed a pen dandy. You can go the Tet Ogre ring route instead of um, Tet Tungrads, but 
I do also recommend getting a Tet Black Star if you can, because it does give a considerable power boost to your Awakening as well. And if you're playing Succession, obviously you'd want to go for a Tet Black Star anyway. You can stick with a Pen Zarka, that is perfectly viable. Just, you know, pick and choose what you want. The Black Star is definitely an MVP for PvE. Now finally for AP upgrades, I'm just going to talk about the 273 bracket. It's definitely a good jump as well, but not as big as the 269. To hit this, you're going to need full TED accessories plus a pen weapon. However, you can go with tri accessories and Kafferang your dandy, though that's quite expensive. You might as well get the accessories. So there is an alternate to the 273 AP bracket. You can go Voltara Belt and Eye of the Ruin Rings for more HP. That's a personal preference, no real uh, reason unless you want to be more tanky. As for the gears, you want to Kafra your Heave Helmets first because it's really cheap to Kafra the Helmet. It's about 1100 Kafra Stones for 5 DP, which is huge. And then you would probably want to go your Begs Gloves if you want more damage output by the form of accuracy. Or go Dim Tree if you want more defensive stats plus be able to Kafra that for the Dead God Armor. And you can also go for the Pen Urgons for the more DR. It is all a good option. That's a personal choice, guys. Just pick and choose what's more important to you in terms of defensive stats and go that route. Now, progressing after this, I really can't comment too much, guys, because this is already stretching my knowledge. I'm not here at this point yet, but I'm getting close. In a couple months, I should be there. But until then, I'm really not going to push any further after this. By now, you're more experienced than me, and you know what to do next. On a side note for anyone in general, doing your logs is really important. They give you a lot of base stats which carry over to all of your characters. For example, uh, 600 HP log is really nice, gives you a lot more tankiness. The Doran's log, it gives you drop rate buffs which can be used to farm more efficiently. The Haral's gives you another DP I believe. And just in general, you want to try to get these logs complete eventually. So. Work on them when you can and try to get them done. Now I just want to highlight the difference between Lieber and Muskins versus Begs and Urgons. So as you can see on the screen, on the left side I have Liebers and Muskins and on the right side I have Begs and Urgons. On the bottom you see the stats as well. The total combined DR of Lieber and Muskins is 94, but the total evasion is 269. Whereas for Begs, the total DR is 130, but the total evasion is 192. Due to the vast difference in stats, it's possible for us to make an evasion build versus a DR build. Now, when it comes to the very high-end AP endgame, evasion build does scale better as DR doesn't scale as high. So it's definitely viable, and if you're planning to go this route, you want to make sure you hit certain thresholds. For example, as a mystic, I have a passive 10% evasion buff. So my goal is to hit 625 evasion, and until I can hit that, I really won't touch the evasion build. So similarly, you gotta figure out what you need for your class, check your class discords and ask around. But it's different for every class depending on whether they have a passive evasion buff or not. So plan your builds accordingly. Next, let's talk a bit about the different type of earrings you have available. Tet Witch's earrings have the same AP as Triton Grads, but they're actually quite a bit cheaper. The only downside is you won't have the passive BSR buff and people might laugh at you. But regardless, don't pay any attention to them. If you want to go Tet Witch's, by all means do it. It's not that drastic of a difference because you will eventually want to go Tet Tungrads instead, or you might want to go Narcs, as we see here next. Tet Narcs have the same AP as Tet Witches and Tri Tungrads, however they have 4 additional DP, which is equal to 4 DR. These are definitely great choices if you're looking for that extra boost in DP to go to higher areas, but it's definitely a personal choice, it's not mandatory, there are other ways to boost your DP by capturing your armors and such, though it is good to know that these are an option. For the final section of this guide, I want to talk about Kafras. Enhancing your armors and weapons with Kafra stones is a means to make them stronger. Kafra levels are basically the levels in between your enhancement levels of weapons. For example, when you're Kafraing a Tet weapon, it goes all the way to Kafra level 20. 
So you're basically getting all the stats between Tet to Pen. Once your item is at Kafra level 20, you can hit the upgrade button and push it to the next level. For example, a Tet gear goes to Pen. However, Pen Kafra level 20 is the maximum. There's nothing beyond that. I do not recommend enhancing with Kafra stones. It is very expensive and is not worth your time or money. Though it is worth enhancing your gear with Kafra stones at some point or the other because as you get to the later stages of the game, AP points get really expensive. For example, if you Kafra a Tet weapon to say Kafra level 4, that's 4 sheet AP. That's huge. That can push you to the next bracket and it makes a big difference. So don't count these out, keep these in mind. Same thing goes for the gears and DP. So that's it for this guide guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you see notifications when I put out new videos. Be sure to check out the description down below, I'll put any relevant links down there as well as links to some other useful videos of mine. And lastly, check out my Discord guys, I have the link down below as well. It's been growing crazy and there's a lot of useful links and resources there, also the community is great. So be sure to drop by and check it out sometime. Anyway, that's all for this video. Take it easy, guys, and see you next time.